Okay, yeah. Right. Communication. Okay. A is communicating with B. Conversely, hopefully B is communicating with A. Conversation, connection. Okay. Now, you know, you've got to be you in your pet. <laughs> okay. Relationships. Or you, family member, relationships. You, coworker, relationships. You, friend, relationship, relationship, communication, conversation. <sighs> so, It takes two, usually. Okay. Now let's just say there's only A or B. Oh, good, we get somebody. Came in late. I'm not going to repeat. Okay. But A, B, B, A, conversation. A, B, no B, A. A is talking, B is not participating. Okay. B talks to A, but A is not really there. Connection. And A can't make B listen, B can't make A listen. So there has to be something before the words, okay? And there's the relationship. A is person with a problem. B is the responder. Nice to have that. Now, if A can't articulate what's going on, B can't respond, or conversely, B is the person with a problem. A is a responder. B has a, an incorrect sense of what's going on and wants a responder to respond. Communication means that there's a connection and connection and, and what? Okay, that's a lot of what Aikido is about. On the mat, we have an uke and a nage. And we have a practice, a technique. Uke has certain skills needed to complement what nage does. And nage has certain skills to bring uke in. So that's your primary relationship. Okay. Now, if you, for example, edit one out, so there's only a or there's only B. Okay. What do you have? Well, initially, you kind of have a void, don't you? <laughs> or you have A talking at B and B talking back at A, and there's really no connection or communication. And you have a type of uh, I don't know, confusion. So Aikido assumes an A and a B. Assumes a connection relationship. And also assumes a conversation. Now that conversation is usually in motion. Okay? Uh, that's my uh, opening spiel for today. Uh, pretty general. Now, if we kind of go, let's say, more into what O-Sensei might have 
done maybe what made him most sensei. A, let's just put him as person. B, there was the universe. So one, there has to be a relationship, A to B. And then there's a conversation. And the question is, what would that conversation be? I'm not talking about B as in the letter B, but B as in what would that conversation be like? Okay. So it's kind of a stepping off point for today. Here I am. Here we all are. Now, what can I do by myself? I can settle. And you can center many ways. You can think of that point. You can straighten your posture for thinking about it. Now, there's something that's happening. So right now, I have a relationship with my body. Shoulders kind of slow. And I've been looking at the computer screen too much. And holding a lot of things in, so I'm about to explode. Ah. You see, so more balance through the body. I have a relationship with, to some degree, my emotional state. So I can go out here and 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 all of a sudden, ah, or I just blank out. Or conversely, and notice how we're cross indexing. I have a better relationship with my body. My body is right here, it's not going anywhere. My mood, my emotional state can drift. So, there is a communication that goes on. And, you know, one way of looking at it, I to self. I, And it grows out there, but then again, I love what's out there. Wow, I'm, this is pretty good. Well, conversely, I don't like what's going out there, so it's a bummer. And they can trigger kind of what we call an emotional state. So whether it's great or not, to some degree, let's just establish some balance here. I'm going to have my thoughts on a bad day. So yeah, a good day, things are kind of light, easier. There's a flow to it. So you see, we have a relationship with self. And uh, that's, why is that important? Well, since they have a relationship with the universe, obviously they have a relationship with himself. There's always an A to a B. I'm potentially agitated or disgusted or whatever it is. Well, self is self. Self is a bit more transparent. And of course, there is how that relationship is reflected through the body. Now here, just by sitting, just getting a little quieter, a little calmer. So I, maybe a little calmer. A little clearer, a little more open. That noise starts out there, my mind starts to get agitated by all this stuff. Again, it's supposed to be a lunch break right now. We're getting a lot of construction. They blocked their windows off because uh, they're power washing and everything. And so we can't even see outside. Kind of a turn, semi transparent, translucent part. I am very agitated. Self. It's a bit normal. It's 
So I can stay with I. Or conversely, I has a constant companion called self. Self, for example, begins to feel itself as a deep or a potential feeling, sense of depth or roots. Whatever's going on out there is going to be going on. Now, do I have a relationship with that? I'm recording it and reacting to it. A, B. A reacts to B, B reacts back. If your relationship with something is reactionary, it's not a relationship. And when A is reacting to B, B is reacting to A, a lot of things like B speaks A doesn't listen, or B speaks at A, A speaks back at B. You get a mess. And, you know, who I am and then self. If, if, if self is pretty much at the level of what I am, you know, I tend to start to complain about the noise. And self at that much lesser level, very much closer to what I am, so see that level. So you should be better. You know, uh, it becomes like a critical parent and I'm a child and I just go, uh, So, you know, there's a lot of work that's kind of done by self at that level. I may be agitated by that noise. I like to play the game of self is calm and deeper. And if you start to happen like that noise passes through, So you get the outside world, which the I is part of, the fact of. And you get situations that that outside world throws at you. And then you have self. And the I tends to be very reactionary with the outside world. So you kind of have a menage a trois, so to speak. I didn't mean to throw that in. Okay. So that noise is extremely irritating. And of course, I can react to that at a lesser level. And the self going on is calmer, clearer, deeper. And then we go on. I always tell them this, but the best course I ever had at the university. Undergraduate and graduate was the psychology of far eastern religion. It was taught by Robert Frencher. And of course, it was Robert Frencher Sensei because he was an idea teacher at that time. And he taught this story about a spiritual teacher. The spiritual teacher was giving a lecture. And apparently, it was right by a fire station. And so what happened is he's giving the lecture and fire engines, fire engines, fire engines, lots of fires that day. And of course, the, you know, audiences come to hear this spiritual teacher. And they're really complaining because they're here to cure, they're here to meditate with him. There was a heat, as I remember. As I'm talking, of course, that gets louder, doesn't it? And after, you know, but like, you know, the uh, spiritual teacher is there to give a lecture, so he gives a lecture. And everybody's getting agitated because the fire engines keep going. And of course, the fire engines are needed somewhere, right? A lot of fires that day. And of course, a lot of fires tend to happen just as everybody gathers to hear a spiritual lecture, maybe do some meditation. So finally, what the spiritual teacher says. 
You people are reacting to what's out there. Every time a fire engine screams out of the fire station, I shoot the Kundalini. And so right now I'm in a much better state than I was before I started, even with all the distractions. And so, you know, we have I, we have self, but we have a we're all kind of in this uh, reality that throws a lot at us. If, uh, your parents, your kids need attention. If you're in a relationship, your partner needs relational contact. I, self, world situation, menage a trois. Okay? Anyway, let me just check in. Yeah, okay. Um, a Cliff, anything you want to say about that? Because I know you're a parent. <laughs> and so you're, you're other things too. But yeah, the, um, um, I think you need a threshold of enlightenment before it starts to <laughs> starts to be a positive. I mean, it's, it's a struggle, right, to um, find a sense of internal peace, like you're the eye of a storm, when there's yeah. a lot of noisy chaos going on around you. Um, yeah. It could be done, I know, I know for a fact, but it is a challenge, right? You know, yeah. and, and when you decide to become a parent, it's like challenge accepted, right? You know, it's just going to be what it is. And yeah. you, you no, have to live your life, and you also have your kids. So um, that's the duality of it. Well, for example, when you start talking, the noise out there gets louder. It's like the universe is telling you to shut up. So if you, yeah, there's an area where I can take it very personally. So we're saying there's I, there's self. There's what's going on in the world, and we just can call that situation. Can be great, can be not so great, can be downright irritating. And we're so sorry, but there's an A, there's a B. A talks to B, B talks to A. That's good. Well, what does that have to do? It has to be some sort of connection or relationship. Okay? Connection is relationship. Aikido, you're relating Uke to Nage, Nage to Uke. Students are relating, you know, from themselves to the teacher, the teacher to themselves. The teacher is relating to whatever a hierarchy usually or conversely you know, relating to a sense of teachings. So there's always an A and a B. Okay? That's the obvious. The less obvious is that there is what's going on, the situation. Okay? Does that make any sense? Cliff, anything? Um. Sure, that makes sense. And it's yeah. also, you know, um, parenting is, you know, a relationship with each kid, right? So yeah. you're kind of, um, you, you trade roles, right? You uke and nage, right? Like who is doing the throwing and who isn't. Um, yeah. And hopefully you create something harmonious from that relationship that is enduring. Yeah. And, you know, for example, you're, you're, you're about to take a black belt test or do a demo for it. You're going to have to, at some point, is a multiple. You got three people out there, like three kids wanting attention with three separate problems. And you're the parent. <laughs> Relation, you know, the, the, the actual situation can get kind of complex. But there is the I. And there is self. Then there is the situation. And the situation, oftentimes, you know, you're there in a relational way to what's going on, especially as a parent, or a responder, or a caregiver, or a teacher. Okay. There's a conversation, okay? So that's well, what I'm looking at. You know, having 
I know, I know you have one kid. I, I, you know, having multiple kids is a lot like, is a lot like Rondori sometimes. Oh, of course. Because you have this energy coming at you. And if they all want you at once, yeah. right, for three different things, in my case, I have three kids, um, then you, it's like Rondori, you try and get them to be in relationship with each other to give you time to deal with like one of them at a time, right? Because yeah. you can't, you can't literally cannot deal with all three at once simultaneously. So you have to start, you know, triaging in some way. And it is kind of randori like you, you, yep. you know, you take it in, you take the energy in and you put it out there and you, you try and get them to have relationship with each other so that they create patterns that allow you to be, to focus one at a time. Yeah. That's my insight for today from the world of parenting. It's a good one. And of course, right inside, the noise gets louder outside. See, the, the interesting thing is a lot of times it appears that we have no control over what's out there. And, you know, therefore we feel powerless, therefore we feel, you know, oftentimes angered or just like depressed. Whatever. Those are pretty standard responses these days. So, you know, there's levels like one of the things, it's just to clear, just to center. Uh, Cliff had a great statement last night, you know, because last night was, you know, the evening of January 6th, which was uh, one of the darkest days of our nation. You know, it was very recent. And there's a tremendous movement by certain people to push it down. Oh, no, that was just a peaceful demonstration. Oh, that was exaggerated, even though, you know, you get the you know, video proof and you get the eyewitness people that were actually there, you know, especially the, you know, the people that were facing an angry mob. And then you get a bunch of people, no, no, that's not right, that's not right. Uh, you know, it was just, there was a lot of love for the police and the, the, the demonstrators were hugging each other. It's like, yeah, okay. And that becomes like that noise. And that starts, you know, in terms of my own I, I start to get very agitated with that. And when I'm agitated, you know, I'm just locked up in this angry dialogue with myself. And that does almost nothing out there. Now, what happened on January the 6th is there's a lot of people locked up with a very angry dialogue about the country, about the election, and somebody went out there and spewed a lot of lies. Guess what? There was a lot of energy there, so they went to you know, basically attack the capital, try to overthrow the peaceful transfer of power on which our democracy is based. When I'm in this sort of a reactionary state, I can't think, I can't discern. So one of the things, let's just say there's an I, there's a self, there's a situation, menage a trois, so to speak. The game I like to play, for example, this is, all that's going on, the you know, the eye is going this way. Self is calm. As I say that, the person is more noise out. Self is to some degree transparent. The transparent you see through the lie. Now react, people are lying to get da 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 da. Yes, okay. Self is transparent. But the question is, for a martial art, if I was gonna go into a sword fight and I'm too worried about what happened on January 6th and blaming certain people, my mind is too noisy. I wouldn't do very well. So the more transparent, the calmer I am, the better I would do 
in a real sword fight. Okay, so if we kind of use the martial aspect of Aikido, then what am I doing? I'm not trying to beat somebody out there, I'm trying to run over me. Their self dilemma. And of course, that comes in, of course, it gets noisier and crazier out here. That's just the way the world is. But the world is giving us energy to make a transformation. Okay? Um, let's see. Yeah, we're going to get up and move just for a bit. But um, what I'd like us to do there's I, and there's self. Okay, so we'd like you to do, I'll just run a quick process. I'm kind of vacant right now. I don't know what to do. I don't have a lot of purpose. What's going on in self? Self has more depth. It's the beginnings of being calmer, more rooted. I'm going to go back to I or me. I'm starting to kind of get the grips on today a bit. So, good. I'm a little bit. What? What's going on in self? Self is more open. If I were a parent and I had three kids, they wanted my attention. From this more open state, okay, this is what this one needs, this one, this one, that one needs, and this one over here, that's what they need. And they're all here in this situation. That'd be a better plan. Okay. Now go back to I. Yeah, I'm starting to feel okay. Go back into self. To realize how immense self is, since it's this much larger, has its own balance with itself. And there's me running around and I getting a little better, but there's self going on. Self is constant, yet ever new. Okay, so just for a second or two, just like you to play that game. We'll check in and then we'll get up and I kind of want to get into the whole thing. Yeah, in the midst of that increase in noise. So anybody with a first tape on that? A cliff, you got anything? Uh, I have no additional insights at this time. I'm sorry, what? I have no additional insights at this time. Okay, all right. Yeah, sometimes what you do is, you know, I'm looking for an insight and trying to please a parent. <laughs> Not at this time. Be easy. Okay, good. Let's stand up. So I'm going to start walking.
Now, let me do the same thing here. A equals I am going to say start. B is the sword and also the sword. Working model, her raise. The handle is right where my third eye is. I go into the crown. The point is up there, right where the center is. At. The crown would be. Cut just past the level. And there is that double spiral. In order to get that double spiral, so if I hold this way, I want to turn the choke this way. So it's a diagonal grip, palm first on the grip, the other finger already on the grip. Same thing here, palm first. So when the raise sneaks, and then there's that closing motion for the diagonal grip, you get the double spiral without locking them. So there's I and the cut, and there's a flow of information. Now, thinking about it is necessary, but Processing it, uh, you're beginning to feel something through the body. Now, initially, notice how the cut is out there. As I continue that, uh, processing it. Is much There's a, there's a relationship. I to sword, I to sword cut. Situation I'm at home with his lung noise going on. And notice right here. I got that information, but the relationship between me and the sword is very external. I do this, I'm getting some exercise, and I get tired of it. I told them something about it. Let me start out there, right? And then the conversation, the sort of talks back, boom, it's an alive, balanced part of me. So cut for just a bit and check in.
Okay. So we work the process. There's some movement. Anybody? Okay. Just that I'm feeling more awake and alive and energized. Yeah. That's okay. all. Yeah, this, this, this is a lot. Okay. It's like you're doing the Tai Chi, and then all of a sudden you realize on a crazy day, because it's an anniversary of January 6th, you feel calmer. Yeah. What I was going to mention was, you know, we're doing some process work, and then I get up and swing. I feel much more vibrant with you. It's almost like the blue, a sword, sword kind of situation. It's almost like that noise instead of you know, that noise I got to center in response to it. I feel more transparent like this, just passing through. So I go, well, I'm out there with like that out there with the sword cuts, but the sword cuts just happening. Right. So I'm out there. Boom. You're kind of transparent all movement happens to you. Yeah, I'm sitting here feeling a lot better. Didn't go to therapy, didn't get body work. Body feels loose, relaxed, engaged. Mind calm. The eye, therefore, is in a much better place with itself. Okay. Self right here is just things. Not so much self, but it's the actual energy. It's the self that ended up using a harmony with yourself. So, obviously, you're sitting here. Doing pretty good. Okay. Better able to handle if I was a responder, I'd be a bit my response to what's going on out there would be a better response. Okay, uh, parent, you'd be able to go better with the children. Okay, anyway, um, let's pick up. So, yeah, I'm a little too quick to get into the source. I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go kind of high in that there. So I want to cut, or I want to cut them with selfies. Self is deep. It seems like self already has a center like that. An up down shaft. So he goes up. In fact, you know, one of the things we talk about, this is our express elevator. This boom, it's our trap. So we're going from the actual mechanical sense of. Now, if you, for example, thinking about the elevator and then thinking about the trap door, uh, that's usually what happens. Two energies, up and down. There's a tendency to do it out there. Self is deeper. So if I relate to just I swinging the sword, I get better out there as an exercise and my shoulders start to ache. And I really, you know, like my wrists and fingers start to hurt.
Okay. So cut a little bit more. Okay, anybody uh, second go around on that process, anybody? Um, this is Cliff. Okay. I, after a while, when I started getting the cuts better, it started feeling like the sword sometimes was weightless. Um, and it reminded me of a feeling I've had lately. I've been doing a couple of one-on-one -on -one, uh, training with David. Yeah. Sensei. And um, uh, th when I get, uh, I've observed that when I, I, I'm Nage and I do everything in a harmonious fashion, Uke feels weightless. And so it was a bit of that feeling. Uh, you know, uh, where the sword is kind of like my partner and the sword feels weightless. So that's that's what I'm observing this time around. Well, one of the things that happens, a lot of times you get people with string of little big heavy swords, you know, they get muscles. Okay. And uh, yeah, there's physical development that way. But Leave it up to the express elevator. Leave it up to the trap door. Or the other way of looking at it, express elevator that way. That way. Now, the, the question, the next step. Okay, so how do you feel when your partner feels weightless? It's not the same level of lie. Um, so, if, or conversely, is the relationship between you and your partner, A to B, B to A, feel weightless, effortless? Just a couple of questions. Questions can kind of mess with you down the other hand. Questions are healthy. I know it. That can go in very strange directions. Okay. I'm just doing the sickness after the cutting. It's really interesting that the weight was stayed. It's pretty cool then. Now, for most people, what happens when they go touch that weightless they, they drift. And then, of course, they go mm -hmm. like that. So the thing is, it's not so much I am weightless, but there's kind of like a weightless effort, I suppose. Like, for example, here, I'd be a much better responder if I needed to take action. I could get into that, or conversely, you know, going that way. But I just need to let the situation settle a bit with itself. If I get involved right now, it's crazy. I'll be part of that craziness. I'm just going to be a little calmer, a little deeper. I'd be a much better responder, wouldn't I? If it's crazy out there and I get involved, Going out there, I add to the insanity. Even if I'm trying to do something like be the voice of reason, it's the voice of reason in a reasoning place.
So it's not so much iron column or iron in that weightless space. Look, the weightless space is here, huh? just a little more transparent. So that's my relationship with the self at this point, making them to feel a bit more weightless. See, other than that, we, we train it being heavier. And then, you know, you're heavier, you make things happen out there, things get caught up in heavier to heavier. And certain problems are multi dimensional or multi faceted. You can't deal with them by being heavier. You know, this word mobs coming in, but it's so heavy with all these energies that you know, and they start to act out out there, and all of a sudden the mob goes out of control. We saw that last January the 6th. Okay. And the police officers are out there trying to quell that without much support, and it was bad. The National Guard wasn't really called in. There was a whole bunch of stuff that, that day. And, you know, I can get caught up in judgments about it. Sometimes it's hard to be a responder. What's, what's the responder here? Be very easy. Don't listen to lies. Keep your sword in its sheath. Uh, anything on that one? Okay. Now, what we've been doing so far, we've been working together as an in the down. And there are energies associated with that up and down. That's the express elevator up. That's the trap door or the express elevator down. But not there. A lot of times this motion here. Not there. And then you can fall in that again or one. Next you pivot for the full blend. I don't understand this, I'm trying to get to here. So, I'm going to force my way there. That's kind of like that mob and last chamber of sixth morning to go into the, you know, the uh, chamber of the, you know, the house and the Senate, because they're going to vote on them or from the picture of the presidential election. Demonstration. Peaceful. Doesn't mean there isn't a lot of energy there, but peaceful. Sometimes, you know, for example, there's a lot going on in me, but there's peaceful going on. And you know, I'm not going to deal with this, but then you know, there's peaceful going on. And there's still some of this going on, and there's peaceful. Going on. There's some of this going on, and some of this peaceful going on. So you put the percentages. Okay. Yeah. Let's bring some more. Oh. Just a tip, because you know I uh, do a lot of this 
and I see my reflection in the mirror, or at least the sword. Without getting rigid, Now, for example, I go like this. I'm aware that it was about an inch out of the left. Now, if I try to correct it, but I just get a bit of balance with myself, and boom. Okay, and just give you another quick one. There's I, there's situation, and there's self. There's also, see, if the I deepens, the I, which is I'm putting with the sword, becomes kind of its own system in response to the situation, which is sword cut. See the emotion out there, that frozen emotion. You can get out there and or conversely when I'm going like this. I'm going for a mental interior. So you have your eye, but it's it starts to kind of think out the self. It starts to touch a more interior level of itself, not just the upper power. The notions that consist the character. But we're kind of out here to start off the I and the character are about the same. But as I starts to think about itself, the character in response to the situation. It's a situation, sort of cut. As a respondent, sort of cut it. Cut a couple more times and let's check it. Okay. So as the I keeps to hang out with self, there is kind of the, the outer situation, but the interior, there's such to be a character in response to the outer. Then a cup with the source, 
Mm -hmm. If you utter, which I'm not going to do at this time, it's a basketball game, boom, you respond to a shooter, and a passer, and a screener, and the roller off the screen to the hoop to catch. Boom. I'm set a screen. I'm going to dribble, hand off somebody so they do something, then I get to the hoop, catch it. And there may be a, an infinite number of characters within the flow of a game or situation. Situations, sub situations, sub sub situations. And so, what I want to be is I want to be increasingly transparent and let I hang out with self. And depending on the situation, I be, I'm the correct responder, situation responder. Okay. Anybody on that one? So uh, what I noticed this time around was partway through the cutting, um, I jumped to a higher energy state, um, not because I decided to step up my game or put more energy into it. It just yeah. seemed like an electron switching shells to a higher energy state. I was just suddenly there with no ramp up between the two states. And then it happened again. So like I was on, you know, a, a third higher energy state. And these were like jump cuts where they, there was no transition, just a phase shift of some sort. It's like uh, Nado Sensei with his one by one and two by two and three by three. It just suddenly was more energetic, freer, yeah. more energy. Well, and what you're experiencing is that they're, you're multi-dimensional. Most people, you know, the eye and the character are just pretty much like this, locked up in the situation called, you know, right now with the pandemic, ordinary reality, right now it seems not so ordinary. As I hangs out with self, the character goes through different dimensional levels of the self. You may feel this upping, but it also has a corresponding deepening. You got roots, you got deeper roots. You're sort of getting boom, jacked up, boom. Oh, you're on your game at a different level. So it really goes both ways. Okay, it's, and you feel like there's also something going on at that deeper level. So you need both, but good. Okay, um, just a little homework if you kind of want to play with it, okay, then we'll call it for today. Okay. The cut that we've been working on is just going to go straight up, up, down, in balance. Okay. Now, something that we've kind of brought up: he can tie. He can tie. He can tie. We get our basic working model. Mm -hmm. well, what is key thing? See, if I'm thinking about a key or looking for a key, the first thing that moves is key. The key represents mind. Mind does lead body. But movement of key leads mind, body boom, is right there, boom. Okay, basic cut, boom. Chicken tie, chicken tie, chicken tie, all right? We're gonna break in just a second. Um, sometimes we have to be able to watch. I talked about sensei, can we start with a basic? And at some point, you know, I don't know if he did it, was everybody who would stand right in front of me, you know, he'd do the key can tie, key can tie, key can tie. He wouldn't explain it, he wouldn't give it a name, I could feel his energy state shifted. 
Anybody, uh, the key can tie cut, anybody, anything, Cliff, you want to add or not? <laughs> no, I, I think I've said my insights for today. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you got to just hang out with it. And, you know, the pattern we're working today, which is some cutting and some sitting processing, okay? Because, you know, I've said this before, but Tojima Sensei, when I first met him, he was a factory worker at the, this paper pulp mill. In fact, you go into Shingo, it was a beautiful little coastal town. There was this huge smokestack spewing all this stuff into the air. <laughs> he worked at that factory, in fact, Dono Sensei did too. But one, one period there, what he would do, he got the night shift, which means, you know, you know, he would have to go into the boiler room, make sure that, that it was safe, it was going to blow up. And all you had to do was check it every 30 minutes. So what he would do, nobody else, he was the only person in the, in the uh, place, he took his bunk in, he checked the meters, cut for 30 minutes, check the meter, sit for 30 minutes. He did that all night. And you know, the uh, expression he used, you know, for that, he was saying, don't do it, but he said, we do practice like that. He said, Nanika may dasu puzzle this. He may come to some sort of realization. So, you know, what would happen if, you know, he would teach the general class and then he would stand in front of somebody and he would cut and let them kind of be in the energy field of his cut, right? And when my sense is when he would face me, he would do the key can time cut. And there's a difference in between the, you get the balance first. You know, otherwise you try key can tie you, it goes crazy. Raise to here, cut consistently, close. That's your basic framework. Now, what happens? Key moves first. Key moves first. More stand up, key moves first. The mind processes the key moving, but then the body moves. People say mind controls or leads body. The Aikido, key leads mind. Spirit over mind. Mind over matter. And so, you know, uh, for me, it's a, there's a bit of intensity with it. If you do this, you're, you're kind of in the upper awareness of it. You know, it's probably you know, it's kind of equal as only the penalties. I'm going like to swing my head and sword, get my arms strong, or my wrist fat, or uh, depending from my brown belt or black belt. So people do that. That's fine. I'm sure we all do it. I probably still do it. Anyway, before we go, any, any, any comments, questions? Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm still, you know, looking after myself a little bit on the uh, Omicron situation. So I'm Elderly, <laughs> yes, and I'm diabetic, I'm double vaxxed and booster, but we don't know about diabetics that much information on in the Omicron. So I'm going to pass on the in person class on Sunday. David E. Sensei will take the class, it'll be a great class. Okay. And then I'll reevaluate it after that. But it's just right now, there's just a lot of stuff going on around that. And so sometimes what you're going to negotiate is like downtime, reacting to a crisis, being a responder, a responder in that crisis. You might want to take advantage of a downtime so you're right more on point. So downtime is sometimes a little meaty. You represent yourself that hangs out in that downtime. That doesn't mean that you're going to try to do the downtime when you, when you responder time, but you have time between responder 
situations and maybe hang out in the downtime. So you start hanging out with self. And you're a better responder or a better cutter or a better stander. Okay. Anyway, that's, that's about it for today.